Okay, what you're looking at here is the oropharyngeal cavity, and it's called the oropharyngeal cavity in sharks just because it's hard to distinguish what part is the oral part and which one is the pharyngeal part, so the whole name is oropharyngeal cavity. Um, on the floor of the cavity, you're going to see the primary tongue, and it's less mobile than the human tongue or the cat tongue. And then you'll also see the opening for the spiracle here. And if you stick your probe through, you'll see it come out the other side where the spiracle would be. And then you'll also see the internal gill slits here are the internal gill slits. And then the little protruding structures of the gill rakers, and those prevent food from entering the gills. And then the branchial pouches, whenever you keep going into the internal gill slits, you'll have the branchial pouches. And the parabranchial chamber, um, if you imagine how this gill would be, um, so this part where the lamellae are would be your branchial pouch. And then the parabranchial chamber would be right here, the part that leads to the external gill slit. And then the interbranchial septum is this entire structure, is the septum, and it is the septum that, that separates each branchial pouch. And then the flap valve is just the term in regards to the traumatic muscles, the traumatic constrictor muscles and their motion that cause the gills to open and close. So just know that as a, more like a definition. Um, the primary gill lamellae are here. The secondary ones you would need to look on a microscope to see, but it's important to know that they're the ones that contain the capillary beds and they're perpendicular to these primary ones. And also um, there's different terms for which gills hold lamellae on the cranial and caudal side. So, for example, these that have it on both sides, those are your um, hollow brank gills, whereas the ones that only have it on one side, as this first one, is hemibrank. And then you'll need to know that the spiracle, which you, it's hard to see online, but this, where the spiracle is, it has a pseudobrank um, gill and with the lamellae. And that's just because it only has one on one side, but that's also more definitional. And then it also has a spiracular valve, which is just the valve that controls it. And all of these, in order to see the branchial arches, just know that those are the cartilages here. And depending on how the shark is cut, um, this branchial arch may be the serratobranchial um, cartilage, or it may be the epibranchial cartilage. It just depends on how it's cut. but know that each of these cartilages respond to a branchial arch. This would be the first, second, third, fourth, and then fifth. And these are all also part of the visceral arches. And again, I said that wrong, but it's fifth, fourth, second, fifth, fourth, third, second, first. And then this would be um, the hyoid arch here. And then the gill rays Whenever you scraped off, oh, which one has it? Whenever you scraped off some of the lamellae, you saw the inner branchial septum. And the gill rays are just the cartilages that are in between, and those are just there to prevent the gills from collapsing on their self. And it's also important to know that the fifth arch, which you saw here, it does not have any um, lamellae, it doesn't have any gill rays. And therefore, it's not actually um, considered like a gill itself. It's just the arch itself. And that's it.